Hi, everybody. Joe with the Gym Life Podcast. We are back with another athlete interview. Uh, this one coming off to us from across the pond, as we say here in the States. Uh, I have Annabelle Chapman with me today uh, from Great Britain. She was the world's ultimate strong man champion in 2021. Great Britain's strongest woman, right? In yeah, yeah, that's right. And then you took third at OSG this year, uh, back in yes, day four. Yeah. Yes. What an exciting year. I mean, I honestly, Annabelle, that couldn't have been much outside of OSG, which I'm sure you were happy with. That yeah. Was a pretty great year. It was a spectacular year. Yeah. I managed to um, up the world record for the Axel Clean and Press as well in the same year. So it was a full on, but a spectacular year. Yeah, I would say there's a lot of strong men and women out there that would dream of that type of resume in one year uh, and yeah. you're doing it. You know, I'd mentioned to you before in conversation that it was about, I guess, six or seven months ago when we had Rhea on, uh, mm. she had mentioned, she said, you know, there's somebody we want you to look out for because she's an up and comer and she's going to be the next biggest thing in strong woman. And she mentioned your name. She said, watch out for Annabelle Chapman. And no sooner did she do that, all of a sudden you just started blowing up on the scene. Um, yeah. Alexa, before you, before we start talking about all this great stuff that happened to you in 2021, uh, one thing I always like to do here is try to get kind of a backstory and where this all started for you. Uh, take us back to kind of when you got into, I guess, athletics as, as a youngster and, and did you yeah. kind of carry that over into sort of where you're at now? Kind of, can you kind of fill in all those blanks for us? Yeah, definitely. So as a, like you say, as a young kid, I've probably always been very sporty. I did netball, football that sort of stuff um, over here in the UK. I don't know if you guys have netball over there. It's kind of like basketball, but you can't dribble. Yeah, I, I, I maybe we, you use a stick with it or? No, no. that's <laughs> lacrosse, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> we would call it lacrosse, I guess. No, I guess we don't have netball, but it sounds, yeah. Pretty, yeah, it sounds like a sport, so okay. Yeah, yeah, so you used to play that anyway. And then sort of going into athletics, I used to do a shot put and discus, so a lot of throwing. Um, and then I, when I sort of came away from school, I still wanted to be um, sort of busy and, and training and just keeping fit. So I used to go and train at the gym um, and play rugby for a little while. Um, and yeah, got into um, strong man or strong woman training. Um, when I met my partner, it's always the partners that seem to get you involved yeah, in it. Yeah. But met my partner and he was like, yeah, let's, let's see, let's see where you're at. And he was like, Jesus Christ, you are really strong. My God, let's yeah. let's see what, how you do in a comp. Um, I did my first novice comp probably, I want to say like three and a half years ago. Um, maybe four years, no, three and a half years ago. Okay. Um, and it just went from there. Did a novice, did an intermediate, qualified for England's, did England's Brits and went to Worlds um, in sort of the space of a year, a year and a half. Yeah, so this is not the scene for you. I mean, the story is one that it's been built in time because you've been yes. spending, you know, you sometimes get these stories of, of these strong men or strong women that come about and all of a sudden within a year or two years, they're kind of on the scene. You got yeah. there, but you've been at it for a little bit, about three, three and a half years, you said. Yeah, yeah. Where been... did you come into your training at then when you were kind of, well, first off, yeah, that moment you have when you find out how strong you really are is kind of special, isn't it? I'm sure your yeah. partner was probably like, oh my God, you know, this is oh. crazy. <laughs> exactly. It was, it was, it was exactly that. And it was the more that we, so I used to train with my partner and his friend and you saw it with the guys. So in my mind, I was like, well, if I'm not lifting as much as them or for as many reps as then I'm, I'm not good enough. So in a way that training with those guys was like, for me really really good because it just pushed me to be sure. be a bit better and try a little harder and actually when it came to those comps I was really well prepared and well prepped because I've been training with the guys and actually it's it's girls you're competing against so Kem, Kemen did particularly well um but yeah it hasn't been plain sailing I mean injuries and 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 that sort of stuff and I mean you have bad comps so it's just coming back from them and doing doing as much as you can, I think, to just prepare. Yeah, it's kind of a part of the sport, isn't it? These setbacks yeah. sometimes there, you know, three, four, five, six months, sometimes longer than that. And you're in between yeah. competitions and then you sort of have to make your way back through the ranks again. And, yeah, um, you know, but it sounds like you navigated that pretty well. When you were a thrower in, in, in school, uh, did you do a lot of weight training back then or was that more just a little off and on kind of thing? 
Yeah, so back in, back in school, so this is probably when I was like um, aged between sort of like 12 and 16. Yeah. That's when I used to do the athletics and the throw-in. And I was just, from a kid, very, very strong. Gotcha. My dad always used to say he'd have me out in the back garden carrying slabs when I was like six. And he'd be like, you'd, you'd always be the one I rely on to help with any heavy lifting because you could just just lift from being so small. Yeah, that's um, what I'm trying to do here is discover where this Annabelle strength came from. Yeah, right? I mean, Where it's... was it? A lot of people have this powerlifting background or maybe yeah. in athletics. But for you, it, it, it is, I guess we can call it just genetic, uh, God-given, I suppose. 100%. Yeah. Just very genetically very lucky. Um, yeah. And yeah, from, from a young age, I mean, I remember my dad putting together like a conservatory in the back garden and the roof was um, like uh, lorry panels. And I think at this time I was like 12 and he, I was carrying these lorry panels off a wagon to help my dad pushing it up onto the roof he would pull in. Yeah. And he always, he would always say, if I didn't have you, that roof would never get put on. Yeah. So it, yeah. it seems very fitting that that you would tell that story because one of the things that I hear about you in the sport, you know, we've got a lot of people that know people and you yeah. the same and you're well known here stateside because of all the competitors that you've competed with over the last few years and many of them we've had on the show and even in side conversations we talk about different competitors and who's out there and one of the reputations that you have, of course, is there's a couple of them. One, everybody says, God, Annabelle's so strong, you know, like this natural ability. And you, you know, kind of just shed light on that. And the other thing that people say about you in competition is you're, well, let me, let me preface this by saying there's these different types of competitors, right? You got these super intense people that are kind yeah. of in their mind. That is not you though, is it, Annabelle? People always say no. you're the most lighthearted, <laughs> fun person. Almost it's comical almost from what I hear. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Where did that all stem from for you? I mean, in competition, has it always just been your personality that you drove home and in competition? Or is that just something you decided, you know, this is just the way I'm going to project myself because I, I feel, I mean, is there a certain uh, reason that you're like that? Or did you not want to try to find that crazy alter ego? Yeah. Do you know what? I think that is my alter ego. That <laughs> is, that That really, like, just happy to be here, bubbly. I want to talk to everybody. That That's, I would because like day to day I'm not that miserable but I'm not you know just like right, oh my right. God, kind of thing yeah um, and I think that does just stem from like earlier competitions so like being really nervous going into a competition I found it helped actually talking to the competitors and making friends gotcha. and that really set me at ease I was like right the, they're just girls it's not as if you're competing against robots or anything else we're all here doing the same thing and I just think to me it was just like a and it still is a coping mechanism of just trying not to be nervous and it yeah. does just help talking to the other athletes and having a good time yeah that that makes sense you know because it is it is an intimidating thing I think especially when you first get into a show yeah you know, these, these really incredible st strong athletes with these very hard exteriors yeah. especially in strong man and strong woman you know we're not yeah. You know, I, I suppose nowadays we've got a bigger mix than we used to have, but yeah, yeah I mean, it is, it kind of puts you at ease when you make these friends and you've certainly done a good job of, of doing that. It seems you are, are just as much a part of a conversation over here as you would be over there. So yeah, oh, you know, fabulous. yeah, you, you, your personality leads the way. So it's, it was definitely a pleasure to be able to get you on today, but oh, so as God. your training kind of progressed with, with your, uh, your partner, um, and you were doing this weight training and you discovered that you had this you know, this great strength, this ability, of course, your dad knew it years ago. Um, yeah. When did, when did the whole idea, I mean, you started training with implements because he was training strongman, right? Is, is that, yeah. okay. and then you started yeah. kind of just throwing around the implements. They introduced sort of the idea of you competing for the first time. Do you remember what that show was? And can you tell us about that? And um, it was a novice show. I can't remember what it was called. Really well, really well run. It was a fab, fabulous comp. A lot of novice girls were there. And I'm still friends with some of the girls that I met from that competition, however many years ago. Um, and it was five events. Um, one of the ladies, she was called Jodie. I remember her walking in. She was like six foot plus. I thought, oh, my God, what have I got myself into here? But it was a, it was just an incredible competition. I won all five events. Um, and it was, yeah, it was just a clean sweep of the day, um, but just really, really enjoyed it. It was, 
I think it was one of them when I was there, I was like, what the hell have I got myself into? But when I left and I'd done particularly well, I was like, right, I want to do that again. Yeah, you found your place, kind of like it was that feeling of finding your people and finding your place. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, because we do know a strong man, a strong woman in particular. It's a different sport. It's, it's you, you, yeah, you, you love the competition side of it, but you truly have to like all the other facets of it to really, you know, enjoy the sport. Yeah, Yeah, 100%. Definitely. So when did you, so you you do that first competition? You said you kind of, you, you had a good year because you were invited to Worlds in that first year. Is that right? Um, I think yes I did the qualifiers um okay. and I um qualified through doing the qualifiers so yeah then got a, got my invite how was that first year um scary yeah really really scary we had the whole chaos team was there so it was nice to have a bit of it wasn't just me going by myself and thinking oh my god I was going with people that have competed there before so it wasn't as nerve wracking, but I just remember walking into where it was, the, the arena, say, and just seeing all the chairs and the people. And I was like, oh, my God, this is happening. Where was that? Where was that one at, Annabelle? So that was da- that was Daytona Beach. Um, oh, it was even then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and who was your competitor? I mean, if, if memory serves correct, if we're going back three or four years, who won that, Donna? Um, it was Donna, yeah. It was yeah. Donna, Victoria, Long, Andrea. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're so walking into you're walking into a, a a contest, quite frankly. That. Oh yeah. These icons I was like, are kind of wow. competing against them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and what did you and, where did you finish up? I can tenth. Oh, you did. So you made it which to was, three. Yeah, which was okay. incredible. Yeah. There was a massive upset with that as well. I got very sad. Okay. so they we'd done it wasn't a massive upset it makes it sound really dramatic it won't <laughs> but they so on the second day we had got finished and we got sat down and my partner was looking at his phone and he was like he was like oh it's like what he was like oh, you haven't made it today free and I was like oh oh okay I was like oh well that's fine that's fine and he turned around to talk to someone and then turn back to me and I'm going, oh, I can't believe I didn't make it to day three. Yeah. But he had, he had looked back on the scores just to see what had actually happened. And they didn't calculate my uh, sandbag run correctly. Okay. They only, it only measured out that I'd done two implements, but I'd done the three implements and the drag. So we went over to Lynn with the footage and was like, we're not sure what's happened, but can this yeah. be altered in any way? And that's what pushed me from, I think I was 12th to, uh, to 9th. Okay. Um, and then when the re, re, we did the day three, I came tenth. Uh, nice. So, so a really, a really nice start to your world world career. I mean, to make that day yeah. three pretty special on your first contest. Honestly, I was just like when I got to day three, I was like, right, we're just enjoying it. It was yeah. the Axel for reps, um, and I can't remember what the other event was, but Axel, I absolutely loved. Thing. So I was yeah. like, I'm gonna enjoy it. There was a really good buzz about day three. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, I've talked to a few athletes that that were their first time at OSG, and really, it's just more about the pageantry of it and just taking it all in and being able to yeah. make it to that third day. Uh, yeah. and competing at with these with these amazing athletes and just being a part of that group uh, I'm Absolutely. sure that was a great day for you just going into it and just enjoying it yeah yeah definitely so how long have you been with chaos did you jump with chaos right out of the gate then is that where the training started no so I I did start um, with a coach but wasn't seeing much uh progression at all um and I went and did it was like um a trial run for England's strongest woman or the, the qualifiers for England's which re was running at chaos so yeah. I went there for for this um trial run and I came away from it and I was like Andy I want to be part of that team yeah. like I want to be a part of chaos um and that's when I moved over with Ree so I think I've been with Ree probably been with Ree maybe two years okay I think yeah two and a half years maybe um but best decision I made to move over. I could imagine. I mean, of course, we're big fans of Rio over here. I am. I, I love her to death. And, and her yeah. story is something special. And I wish more people would know it because it really is yeah. one of the coolest interviews I've ever had with her. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty special place to be close enough to be able to train there. I mean, to be oh, in well, that position, right? How close are you yeah. to, to the facility? 
Yeah, so we we actually don't train at the gym. Oh, you don't. So okay. we just programs us. We train at um, a place called LR Strength Shed, which is where Luke Richardson trains. Okay. Okay. And um, so the strongman Luke Richardson. Okay. okay. So um, part of the team, and then you just kind of satellite from there, and I imagine yes, those exactly. might get together occasionally on certain days, or, or yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I was going to say how how convenient would that be? You're right around the corner from chaos. I know. Nice. I know. As nice as that would be, but you know, obviously, you're you're with a great group of girls and guys over there. I mean, it's a it's a, it's a world renowned establishment now, you know, in oh, yeah. history and what she's done. And now you being a part of that, I mean, it's breeding champions for goodness sake, you know, and that's it's literally, awesome. it literally yeah. is. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I know you girls seem to be everywhere right now around the world. So, <laughs> yeah. so you're, you, you know, getting kind of fast forwarding just a little bit. So you're working with React chaos and you're doing all, you know, this training is starting to really click for you. You've already had a great experience at OSG going there with the chaos team. Um, you know, I want to fast forward a little bit just to 2021, because that's really this last year was really kind of your breakout year, although you had some good moments leading up to that. Yeah, um, you get to, uh, I guess, world's ultimate strongman. That was kind of where it all started, right? Yeah, that was that was one hell of a show. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it you were was, going against some monsters. I mean, this was absolutely it was absolutely. a small field, but it was stacked. Stacked, really. And do you know what it was like? half the field was like shoulders everybody was like yeah brilliant at pressing but then everybody was brilliant at stones everybody was just brilliant at everything but I think that's what made it yeah. such a good show yeah besides the host right I mean I keep I hear things about that show that every strong person on the planet wants to be a part of that whole scene in Dubai yeah um, I imagine that's something every year you're going to be looking forward to. I'm sure you got the invite already to come back um, what was that contest like in respect to how quickly it moved? Because I understand that was a pretty fast competition. Yeah, it was. So I think all in all, it was 90 minutes, which yeah. is probably the fastest show I've ever done. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. You didn't okay. have a chance to think about things overly much. It was a case of, right, we're warm, get out, let's go. So I actually quite enjoyed the fast pace of the show. Um, yeah. I really did enjoy it. Um but it was really well run. The guys there were brilliant. We were really looked after. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fantastic show. Probably one of my, I'm going to put it up there as my top three experiences yeah. in my life. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that from a couple of people now. That's a it was a pretty yeah. special experience out there. I prefer not to call it WUSS because it just sounds like a terrible acronym. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah. there, was no, there was no WUSSes there, but World's Ultimate <laughs> Strongman. I know everybody's yeah. looking forward to this year out there. Uh, again, yeah. I'm assuming that they're already scheduling it and have talked to some of you athletes about it. But compared to fingers like, a three, yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed for sure. We need more events like that. Um, yeah. What about the, um, the, the uh, compared to OSG, you know, real quick, because that three day event, uh, was that something that you've gotten used to now over the years? Because a lot of uh, strong men and women, when they first take on that type of contest where it's over a course of three days, was that a big adjustment for you? Or was that, did you have an easier, easy time with that as well? Um, it was a big adjustment. Um, the re recovering from the, the, you know, going all out for one for, for two events and the next day all out again. And the third day when you're actually pretty battered and bruised and, and yeah. ready to go to bed, you've, you've just got to try that that one bit more. Right. Um, I wouldn't say I prefer either or. I just think they're both very different experiences. Gotcha. Um, so I do enjoy the three days because I think... I don't know. I think it could be anybody's at that point, depending yeah. on how each athlete recovers or depending on how hard they've trained on the recovery or on and that sort of thing. Whereas on a 90 minute comp, again, anything can happen in 90 minutes, can't it? Yeah, yeah, I suppose you're right. But you're right about I, I would kind of agree with you more on the three day event because that is a different variable. I mean, how yeah. women or men are going to adjust to that over the course of three days. Those yeah. aches and pains tend to always set in a day later. You can generally oh, yeah. get through the adrenaline of a 90-minute show, even if you got a little banged up. Yeah. Um, but I suppose when you're at a high level like you're at, you've just being a, prepared to compete is another part of the training. It's not just, yeah. you know, throwing up implements. It's knowing what kind of show you're getting into and how you're preparing for that. And I know yeah. the team that you have around you is well experienced to be able to dissect that type of thing over and over again. So I, I, I'm certain that you have no issue there. Um, so how about your training? I mean, you get, and we'll get on to the other events in a second, but your training, um, did, do you have a particular style when Rhea works with you or the chaos team? 
because you offer different variables with your strength. Um, obviously, when we talk about strongman, we train a lot of implements, but a, does a lot of your training, is it focused year round on implements? Do you generally just train certain implements for certain shows? Do you go into more of a programming uh, block for shows or is it, uh, you know, can you explain that a little bit, how that works with gym equipment versus your implements and how you kind of work those in? Yeah, so usually, um, so if we're not prepping for a show, which it seemed to be 2021 that we we're always prepping for something, yeah. but usually it's a, a deadlift one day, overhead the next day, squats another day, and events on a fourth day okay. with the odd, you know, event in between. Um, so, yeah, and then when it comes to comp prep, it is she, she keeps me on the squat deadlift overhead but really pushes the events that are in that particular show yeah. um which boarded well last year because the brits events and the wuss events were very similar okay. and i competed at the world's ultimate strongman show flew yeah. home went to sleep and competed at brits so yeah. it was a it was a very quick turnaround and uh it it did help that the the events were very similar so yeah sometimes we get lucky like that I mean it's it's because yeah. it can get a little bit different in programming when you're going from event to event so quickly and I know yeah. we're generally pretty good at everything right any professional strong person is going to be pretty good at everything but having that bit of contest prep is always a, a key of course to work off the rust and get yourself prepared yeah. for your lift yeah so that worked out for you so you went back from wuss to uh wuss I said it I'm going to quit saying it I said I was going to quit saying it world's ultimate strongman um, and you went back to the uh, Britain's Strongest Woman. Yes. Yeah. When yeah. that turnaround you said was about what? Two, was it a week or two weeks? Right. It was pretty close. It was. So it was what between the comps? Yeah, between the comps. It was uh, about I want to say thirty-five hours. Oh, geez, oh, Pete, was it really that quick? Yeah. Oh my God! I know. So I even... flew. Yeah, I flew back the Friday, landed the Saturday, and competed the Sunday. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I yeah, never so, put that together in my mind. Cause you know, we get this information kind of via social media as it kind of falls yeah. in my lap. Um, that's crazy. Okay. That is just, that yeah. changes the game right there. And so I had like the only a, one in that competition that competed over at, at world's ultimate strongman. Yes. Yeah. Oh boy. Now this is storybook because now you go to Britain's strongest woman, which is a lineup from, I mean, of the gods, right? I mean, you've got yeah. Lucy Saunders and Donna Moore and, well, they 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 didn't compete. They weren't there at Brits this year. Oh, they um, weren't. It was, okay. um, there was Rebecca Roberts. She was yeah. there. Okay. Um, and and other fantastic ladies. So, but yeah. I, I was. It was the first. The Britain's Strongest Woman was like the first time it's been in like an an arena show. So I really did just want to go to okay. support and help the girls. And if there was anything I could do backstage, I would. And I'd obviously be there and, and yeah. compete just to be in the moment and just really appreciate you know Britain's Strongest Woman being at Don Doncaster Dome here over yeah. in the UK yeah N not in any way did I think that I would win Brits it was wow. just going there and just enjoy again enjoying the day and seeing the girls and yeah you know what I mean and it was just it was a really fab day and it just happened yeah how, how it just I mean and I, I thought I'd come second so I'm backstage and my coach Luke who was helping out it was yeah. like, congratulations, can't believe it, Britain's Strongest Woman. I was like, no, I'm not. I was like, oh, come the second. And he was like, no, Annabelle, you came first. And I just came out crying. I'm just like, oh. Wow, that is, that's, a, I mean, it's, a, it's more amazing to me now knowing that it was such a quick turnaround because that's just something that, yeah. yeah, storybook, really. I mean, you see what happens to these guys in particular. And I think maybe more recently it was Tom, was it Tom over in, uh, uh, when he was competing at uh, Arnold recently, that was a quick turnaround yeah. for those guys. And I kind of attributed that performance to uh, travel in such a short time between giants and because it generally yeah. you wear your body out so much. But again, Annabelle, that's just a perfect example of the type of athlete you are. And uh, and then everybody kind of prefaced you kind of coming up through the ranks that you have this ability right now to pull off that back to back kind of show, which is unusual for a lot of people. It really is. Yeah. So, so you so you're you're doing that. You get you get Britain's strongest woman, which is amazing. What what you're a big overhead presser. We know that we're talked. I talked to you the other day or texted you the other day about uh, breaking that log press record. Uh, yeah. Got that set for Giants in June, right? 
So this is for, this is with um, official strong, uh, sorry, the, can't get my words, words yeah. out. It's Ultimate Strongman. Um, so that's run by Glenn Ross. Okay, Ultimate um, Strongman. Okay. Yeah. And that's um, held in June. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm very excited for that. Again, that's, that'll be with um, Britain's Ultimate Strongman there. Um, they run a show and I'll okay. be doing like a halftime show like Lucy Unders did with her deadlift. Yes. Um, yes. So I'll be doing that with, with the log. So that's, that's your next show that you're prepping for essentially then, right? Is there anything uh, in between that? No, I've got literally this year is just mad. I've got exactly. UK's, yeah. UK's strongest woman in April. Okay. Then in June, it's the log world record. Yes. And then August is Brits um, world. I'm hoping that Wuss, World's Ultimate sort of Strongman, bring yeah, out um, yeah, yeah. bring out <laughs> bring out a show. Um, yeah. it, nothing's been set in stone yet, but I'm hoping that they do another wow. lady show. Yeah. Um, and then Giants Live are doing the Strongest Nations, and I would hope yes. that I would be I'm fighting. so glad to hear that. That is just a fun event for everybody, you know. Literally, got these scenes now that are very head to head, which yeah. we've, we've wanted for many many years, and we've always kind of got it. But I yeah. think it was like your scene was up and our scene would be down or other scenes that is as well. But it was never yeah. really, we catch them both at a peak at the same time. And yeah. I kind of feel like we're there with the men and women right now. Do you kind of get that feeling as well that from a, I guess from a, from where we're at States to, to Great Britain, that we're kind of in this real cool spot that at any given Saturday, we've got competitors coming from both sides of the pond, if you will, that are oh, yeah. capable of pulling yeah. the job off. Yeah. Big, big, big time big time i think this um osg just gone 2021 the open scene was incredible the opens women was so stacked the yeah. points between the top five it it, it was like half a point. it could have been anybody's depending on how an event went it was incredible it was really really good so i think and that was uh, ukraine uk you know uh, of, of the where you guys are, US, there was just so many incredible athletes. Yeah. It it yeah. There's there's some really strong men and women out there. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's really just a testament to the growth of the sport. I know over in Europe yeah. and where you're at, you know, the sport has always been. We we envy that scene because the pageantry of the competitions there is amazing. What Giants yeah. does over there and the amount of people that they pack in the stadiums. It's something yeah. over here in the U.S. that we just we pray for because we want good promoters to come up. And we've got some, obviously, Anthony Furman's doing some things with Clash, yeah. Dogs, which is exciting yeah. and bringing in a whole new audience for us. But we're, we dream of that point where we can have a stadium filled like you guys do out there uh, to showcase yeah. the strength athletes we have over here. And we're getting there. But I think what's really nice now, social media has provided us a big platform to share each other's experiences, which has been fun. Yeah. And be yeah. able to know each other now and root for each other a little bit, like I do, yeah. of course, for the scene over there. I'm a big fan of it, and I, I'm always on my podcast telling people, you got to get in touch with this UK scene if you haven't, because this is where everything's going to come head to head with us. And yeah. be prepared, because at any given Saturday, again, it's going to be Annamel Chapman or Rhea or, or Tom or Luke or a number of guys yeah. that are out there, and it's really fun to watch. When you were at the OSG then this year and you saw that big stack lineup, and it was a stack lineup, especially, like you said, in the open class. Um, yeah. What were your expectations going in this year? I know winning, I get that, but you looked at the lineup, you looked at the events. Do you, do you get put a lot of pressure on yourself at that point because you've had such a good year to perform or do you generally go in like you are right now, Annabelle, very cool demeanor. Yeah. It's very, I never, I never go in with the intention to win. And that, yeah. that is like honest opinion. I go because I just enjoy it in my mind this year. I was like, if I better my 10th place, I'm happy. Yeah. If I and I had little set goals that I wanted to do, um, little PBs that I wanted to hit, and if I hit them, and I bet I came ninth, that would have been a fantastic show for myself. Yeah. So I never go in with the in, uh, intention to win. Now I, I, I am competitive when it gets to it. If I'm in a race, I'll obviously try my hardest to run as fast as I can, and it's it's one of them. But I would never put that pressure on myself to be like, right, if you don't come first. You, you rubbish because I think it is a hobby at the end of the day yeah. and it's just something that I really really enjoy and I would just hate to go to a comp and put that much pressure on myself that I just don't enjoy it 
Yeah, and, and I think that's what that's where a lot of folks pick up on your demeanor. I think you you project that really well. You're having fun, and I, I think it's good for other competitors to see that. Yeah. But there are some out there that boy, it's it's a rough day if they're not winning, and it shouldn't be like, yeah. that, of course. But like you said, when you're if you're hitting your best numbers in competition and you don't win, yeah. I mean, how can you beat yourself up? I mean, it's exactly. somebody else's day. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, this year, one of my one of my right this is your goal, Annabelle, was to get all the sandbags over the over the yeah. thing um, without missing it. So as long as I got all five over, boom, 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 I was like happy. And I, I got it and I did it and I was ecstatic. Yeah. I came off, did a cartwheel, danced my way off. Nice. And I was like, that's brilliant. That's what I wanted. Yeah. But I didn't, but I didn't win that event. I did I placed well, but I didn't win it. But I would never beat myself up about yeah not winning the event because I did so what I did for me personally yeah what I wanted to achieve well and it sounds like when the dust cleared and that day three kind of got finished and you found yourself on the podium again in a very stacked open class I mean there's really not much more you can ask for how close was it I don't remember this I, I just generally look at the podium finish was, yeah. was was there some moments there or did you kind of sniff it out did your coaches say no but listen maybe they don't talk to you about it during competition but was yeah. there what, what I don't know what the disparity was between first and third there was a, a, there wasn't many points in it I think if yeah. if somebody messed up on one event it could have been the others and if I yeah, messed yeah. up on one event it could it was very yeah. tight that's what um, I would guess. yeah it was really really tight I came third off count back yeah. Um, so actually I was tied on points until count back on the stones, which yeah. got me third. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a very close competition. Definitely. And, and stones, from what I understand, we're reading your, your bio and a lot of your profile. That's your nemesis a bit, isn't it? it oh yeah. <laughs> sorry to bring that up. Yeah. yeah it uh, but it sounds it's like just... you did good enough to get it done at OSG. So yeah. 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 I'm not, I'm not, terrible at them I can do them I don't enjoy them my arms are really short mm. my quad space is really short so for me to and my my yeah. legs are short and thick set so for me to pick up the stone yeah. get attacked it's just yeah I don't have a good time with it but I am really gonna I'm hammering that this year that is my it's deadlifts and stones we're not gonna drop any points on them now yeah. so we're really hard on them this year yeah sometimes our bodies just don't let us physiologically <laughs> be the exact athlete we want to be when we're <laughs> working a certain yeah I know I'm just like come on same with hoping, my dead thing are you well. hoping I'm for like, squats this year because I was watching you squat and you're a beast on the squat yeah I don't mind a squat I don't mind a squat at all I've worked really really hard so I had a really bad knee injury when I sort of first started out on on strongman and I couldn't squat I couldn't do stones I couldn't um sort of track my knee forward at all without excruciating pain worked with um Chris Peel he literally got me sorted out within a month and I was like on it so oh, um and it, it, squats isn't something I, I train overly regularly or haven't done in the past six months because if I am feeling quite fatigued and quite tired it's always my leg day that I drop yeah so over like um when we were doing WUS and, and OSG and then it was Christmas and then you come into the new year I've only really just started getting back with the squats. So hopefully yeah. if there is a squat event, we can really build that up and it could be, could be spectacular really. Yeah. I, I think so too. I think really you're a sleeper in the squat. I, I, some of the training I was watching, those numbers were just effortless for you to put up some big numbers. Well, we're starting to see that, right? We're seeing the squat kind of make its way back. Yeah. Um, it yeah. And I bad. love that. I think it's awesome. I think yeah. it was that one variable that was missing from competition that, didn't completely rye on overhead press and deadlifting. I mean, it threw yeah. in that not, take away the posterior chain and, and get some quad strength in there. I yeah. love seeing that. I really do. Yeah, I think definitely. there's several events we don't see a lot of anymore. And I make mention of this. We don't see a lot of tire anymore, uh, which is no. sad. I love the tire. And I don't know why we don't. People say injury. I don't know. I'm, jury's out on, on my opinion on that. But uh, it is nice to see some of these promoters now getting creative uh, with their with their with their yeah. implements and competition um, yeah you know so I, I imagine um, you've got a couple favorites that you like we know overhead press is one of them yeah without a doubt yeah, yeah. without yeah. a doubt 
And what is that number you're shooting for? I know the record, but is there kind of like in the back of your mind where you think you're putting yourself at right now? Um, if everything fell like it should for that log. Record? Yeah. If everything, if everything in prep goes how it should, and if on the day I'm feeling my best, I'm hoping to hit 140, 145 okay. kilos. Yeah. I don't know what that is in, in pounds. But... I can't figure it out in my head. We'll let the listeners figure that out. I still can't. Yeah. <laughs> still trying. Um, you know, because we've got some big pressers over here coming. We just had this conversation the other day. And I'm not sure, yeah. maybe you can tell me, Annabelle, is the, is the log, is, are there several log press? I mean, there's an American log press record. I know there's a probably British log press record, but this is the world log press record you're going for, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, the world. And, and maybe that's where I'm, I'm kind of confused on my end because we've got a couple big pressers over here that are attempting yeah. to break that soon as well. And I'm, yeah, I, guess I know. Yeah, Nadia Stowers, yes. incredible log presser. I think she's attempting the world record a week prior to me. Okay. Um, I'm not I'm not sure what number she's wanting to hit, but I do know that she's definitely looking to hit. Yeah. Um, and I know Inez, um, yes, Inez. very yes. new to Strongman mm -hmm. as well. Beef. Incredible. Beef. Unbelievable, head. yes. Yeah, yeah, she's going for it. She's the one who I got joint points on at OSG. Oh, oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I just did an interview with Inez a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm a yeah. big fan of hers. And yeah, she's just, I think she's our American version of Annabelle Chapman, if you want to be, if you want me to be. Oh, I really gosh. believe that. Yeah. I mean, you it's guys just, the, the way you're come onto the scene and uh, yeah, there's very, I draw a lot of similarities there. Um, yeah. So that's the interesting to me that Nadia is going to do hers a week prior. Boy, isn't that perfect for you, huh? <laughs> I know. I'm just like, oh my God. Pressure. Yeah. Well, Pressure, now you might have to up that number a little bit if she hits something big, oh yeah. Hey, but records are made to be broken, and we all love exactly. that. Exactly, and yeah. do you know what, Nadia, so she competes as a, an under-82, so she's not even a, an open weight, Which is crazy. open weight girl. So, bloody hell, if she wants that record, take it, my darling, because it, <laughs> she, she's, she's earned it big time. She's yeah. got incredible pressing strength. She really does, and it's interesting because you mentioned that. She's not an open class uh, no. at all. when you look at her she's so muscular you just assume she is I mean and you know what she's like really short as well she's really dinky really yeah. short and I'm like oh but she's lovely as well like yeah. oh, absolutely Annabelle. lovely yeah yeah you, she was a um, world's ultimate strong woman as well and yeah. yeah really really lovely lady yeah that's great that you you've started to develop uh, a lot of inroads with a lot of competitors everywhere and I yeah. think again, social media has kind of opened that up for all of us to enjoy each other's uh enjoy each other and meeting each other yeah. Um, are, are there certain strong women? Well, let's get on to the Britain strongman scene real quick here, because yeah. I love your scene out there because it is, and Rhea probably put it best. She says, you know, you guys got from California to New York and, and you've got a big territory and all these different places where all these strong men and women are hiding out, where the British right. scene is a little more centralized. So you get yeah. to know all your competitors and it's a very tight knit sort of a group over there and, and yeah. you, you can end up feeding off one another. But the, the, amazing athletes you get out of there. How is the scene over there right now? What's the pulse of the British scene as far as strong men and strong women are concerned from your perspective? As in who's good, who's, who's yeah, up and just coming. kind of like in general, do you feel like there's been a, a, a big shift uh, in, in a good direction in the sport over there? I mean, I see that of course, um, with all these great athletes coming out of there and the size of the, uh, uh, the spec spectators at these competitions and, and things, um, you know, how is it, how has it been for you kind of moving through that British scene? We know you're friends with Rhea and you're part of chaos, but are there other strong women over there and strong men that you kind of have taken bits and pieces from, or there's experiences that you've shared with some other people over there? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. The, the strong, like you said, the strong women scene over here is very close. Everybody is very much, you know, speaking with each other, feeding off each other. I'm really close with Lucy, who's got the 300 kilo yeah. deadlift. And um, she broke that world record. Insane strong woman. Um, even like some of the lightweight category girls. So Chloe Brennan, um, oh, I've yeah. been and done a few sessions with Chloe. She's just done the Dinny world record, which yeah, I tried wow. like an absolute baby. Yeah. Um, and even to um, Farah, um, I'm going to, Farah con can't think of her surname or I'll ruin it if I say it but she's called Farah again she's a lightweight strong woman she's just opened um uh, an all-women's gym and she's a really good advocate for strong women over here in the UK um and again 
we just feel, everyone's just feeding off each other over here and it's yeah. very I think it's I think personally it's a very positive environment um and yeah it's it is brilliant yeah it's I think it's the best it's been in a long long time I mean there's yeah. a, lot, a lot of good stuff going on over there did you yeah. watch that Eddie and Thor fight last night oh yes I said I won't gonna but I did <laughs> everybody everybody said the same thing all of us watched it I know yeah I, I, Everyone watched I, I know I know Eddie's a I'm sure you've hung out with Eddie over there and got to meet him so I'm I'm not going to ask who you were rooting for because I can already assume who it was but what do you think of the fight do you think we should keep doing this in the strongman community no <laughs> no I don't yeah. it was a, do you know what I was very impressed that they went for all the rounds I was too, like, yeah. yeah like from what I understand on boxing to go through all the rounds is quite knackering it's quite tiring yeah so for them to actually go through all the rounds was very impressive I do just think that maybe now that we've got it done that's where it should end you know there's either strongman or boxing it should never it should never yeah. mix no I agree and I guess for those guys they've kind of moved out of the strongman game and and yeah. you know, they're, they're trying to find different inroads to different things to do and so I don't blame them for that but let's Let's keep it to those who have retired from strong men and strong women. Let's at least. Yes, keep, let's keep not that expand. Much. Yes, absolutely. We don't want to see all this goofiness coming into our sport. No, no slap boxing not. either anytime soon. We don't want any of that stuff either. No. I no, saw that at the Arnold. Uh, I, I saw that at the Arnold this year and I was just like, oh no, what are we doing? But it <laughs> is addictive. If you ever watch it, it, it is pretty addictive. So, yeah. But uh, so Lucy, or I'm sorry, Lucy, I was thinking of Lucy Saunders in that deadlift. So, Annabelle. You, which is awesome, by the way. Um, I, I, what are you What are you hearing over there? It wasn't didn't uh, and I didn't follow up on it. Didn't Rhea and Lucy do a competition recently together? Yeah, so that was UK's strongest woman last year. Yeah, they oh, no. weren't uh, they supposed to do a deadlift, like some type of deadlift, like some type of exhibition against each other? I thought that I, is that's this year. It is okay. Yeah, I can't remember the date, but that is this year. Yeah, I'll check on that. Yeah, I, I saw something. It was kind of posted a, a while back. I thought, wow, that, yeah. how soon is that happening? So there's a lot of good stuff happening. So yeah, there's there's a lot going on in the women's scene this year, right. um, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's like all these cool opportunities, and not just like yeah. you said, competing at, at a competition. But you know, we're having these opportunities now to do these record breakers, these other type of events. Yeah. It gets a lot of people involved, and we like that stuff. You know, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, When's the next time you come in stateside? Um, it'll be OSG more than likely, unless yeah. World's a little much strong man do a show over in the US because. Last year was meant to be in Jacksonville, but because of COVID and, and everything That's else, great. it was easier to do it over in Dubai. And um, yep. so whether they do another show and whether it's in Dubai or, or US, it may be that time. But That's interesting. I didn't think about that. You're right. That can open up a really big show over here. Boy, oh boy. That's yeah. an interesting caveat to the year if, if the World's Ultimate does something over here. Wow, that's yeah. exciting. Glad you brought that up. I'm going to do some research yeah. <laughs> and see what they're coming up with. Well, well, listen, Annabelle, I appreciate you coming on with me today. Um, I've looked forward to this moment for, well, since I've talked to Rhea and been watching your 2021 explosion, I'm going to call it. Oh. And obviously, I know you don't put any pressure on yourself, but the rest of the strongman community is putting some pressure on you because <laughs> the potential is unbelievable. And of course, we'd love to see you on top of the podium everywhere you go. I, I know oh. you've got a huge fan base over here. And I know they're all going to appreciate this interview. So thank you so much for joining me today. Is there anything you'd like to add before I close it out? Just thank you for having me and everyone. Thank you for watching. I hope have, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, hey, great. And I'm, I'm certain they will, Annabelle. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon. And, and hopefully uh, this year when you're stateside, I'll catch up with you somewhere. But other than that, I'll, I'll catch up with you again after one of these great wins I know you're going to have this year. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye.